All right guys, here we go. The hydroponic greenhouse build video. So this is a 5,000 square foot greenhouse and it's fitted with an NFT system and a Dutch bucket system. So I have Doug and Katie here because this was a big family project and dad was the foreman. And also my husband Bobby helped too, so he's in a lot of the pictures. We'll be saying greenhouse, headhouse, and control tunnel a lot. And those are the three parts of the whole facility. We started the project in the summer of 2013 and we picked the, the site location because of the natural slope of the property back here. Also we had an electrical line that ran back to the oil well and so we were close enough to do a drop off the electrical line. All the equipment that we used for this project was equipment that I had from my construction business. Uh, what we had to do was to get the site ready and that meant getting down to a base that we could actually build on. You're always the laser level girl. Oh yeah, and I remember getting yelled at to hold the laser straight. <laughs> I was always leaning one way or leaning the other way. I forgot about that. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, from there, we actually dug the footers. Uh, these are just trench footers. So we had the concrete come in and we filled the trench with concrete, with rebar. Here, Bobby and I are laying block, trying to pull our lines so that we could get everything plumb and square. Uh, everybody in the family helped carry block. It moves pretty quick. Put in an exterior footer drain. Now I'm just getting the inside of the foundation leveled off for the concrete floor. We actually put plastic and then rebar down for that also. For the concrete pour of the floor, we had to hire some of the local guys that do concrete. So they helped us get the concrete in and um, leveled out. Once you get the foundation done, you're really on your way of getting the building completed. So we were really happy to get this part done. Early fall, we started working on the head house structure and we worked really hard to get as much done as we could before winter came. So at this point, we're just getting all the posts in, uh, getting all the ledger boards, really trying to get the, the framing done so that we could get the trusses set. My original idea was I, I made a uh, truss crane for my skidster, but those trusses were really heavy. They were built to have an attic. We were really nervous trying to lift those trusses with my skidster, so uh, the next day we went out and rented a articulated lift that was a lot better at, uh, and safer to put the trusses up. This is just flying the trusses into spot. Once you get the system down, you get everything ready to go, they go in really fast. That's Bob up on the roof, actually putting the nailers down. We've got a built-in attic in the thing, so that made those trusses a little bit heavy, but it was real, well worth it because we have an attic space now that normally people don't think about, and that would have been lost space up there. Here's the attic now, and we just used it mainly for storage. Um, got some old packaging and stuff, but it's got a really cool view. After that, we got the metal roof on, and it was funny because we strapped Bobby down so he could screw on the panels up there. But it was nice having that on because we were always working outside, so we were able to move all of our tools in here and then have a nice sheltered work area. Then we started setting the posts for the greenhouse, and the first one we did is actually back in that corner. You can't really see it, but we worked on all these outside ones and then the ones down in the middle. At this point, we basically set up our grid system so that we could lay out all the greenhouse posts. Um, that we accomplished with uh, actually having a fence auger on the back of the tractor, and we went down and just dug all the holes for the posts, got those all cleaned out. The real problem that we had was uh, most people just get a concrete truck and they'll fill up those holes and then push the posts in and try to keep them level. And I knew that we couldn't do that because uh, we didn't have enough people and also um, it just wouldn't have worked out straight enough for me. So what I did was we got a, a, a quick set concrete that we actually put a bag in for each post that would actually hold it in place and then we went back and cemented the rest of the hole with a really strong uh, concrete mix. 
Do you remember those two levels that Dad had with the magnets? Yeah. And walking around, we're like, is it straight? Is it straight? <laughs> oh my gosh. And then the magnets where they would slide down the pole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then right after that is when we got the cement down. Oh yeah, I remember when they were forming it up. And yeah. it was really exciting to see the layout of the greenhouse and like, it was all like finally able to visualize it. After we got all the posts set, we went around and actually put the bottom ledger boards in. And then we formed all the other pads that we needed to do for the sidewalks and the front concrete areas. Here, I'm just putting in the uh, concrete forms and the gravel and the plastic so that we can get ready for the concreting of the inside of the greenhouse. And I hired the guys that helped us pour the floor for the headhouse for the greenhouse. Again, just so much concrete. We didn't have enough um, people that actually could handle it. So it's better to have more people for concrete than you need because you have limited time and you have to get it down and it has to be right. So that's what we did there. Then we went back and forth with smaller projects for the greenhouse and the head house. And we started on things like the front porch of the head house, um, got the electric drop down from the power line, and put in the vapor barrier and gravel in between the greenhouse aisles. And then we started working on the posts for the NFT support system. So I had one of our electric jackhammers that I kept from work. Uh, when I sold the business and um, I couldn't think of a way that we could put in these supports for the lettuce and I really didn't want to go back with the post hole digger and dig those out by hand and cement them in so I ended up making a bit for the end of this electric jackhammer and we basically just pounded the post right into the ground and it's worked great they're super solid they're they're not going anywhere and they're probably three feet into the ground The next project was getting in this reservoir tank and dad put a lot of thought into how to do this correctly. We didn't pour the back sidewalk so that I could still get in there with my excavator. I dug the hole, we went up to the house for dinner, went to bed, the next morning we got up and the hole was totally filled with water and obviously that was a huge problem. So we pumped all the water out, that tank would float if it ever was empty and I couldn't afford to have it pop out of the ground. So my idea was to put a corrugated pipe next to where the tank was going to be installed that would be about four feet deeper than the bottom of the tank. And in that, I put a sump pump that would actually lower the water table below the tank so it wouldn't float out of the ground. We ended up pouring a concrete slab on the bottom. And with that, I put um, eye, eye bolts in there and we actually put aircraft cable that came up and around the top of the tank to actually hold it into place also. So that was a major problem. And it, it, so far, it's worked out great. are still working good. As winter set in, we kept going on the greenhouse frame. Bobby and Dad figured out a good system of how to work together, but it got really cold that winter. So we kind of paused on that and then focused on getting the metal done on the head house. The metal on the head house, first we, we chose tan and green, that's the farm colors. The long walls I actually worked on myself. I did the bottom green and the short tan pieces on the top. On the weekends, everyone would come over and help with the long sheets that were on the end. Uh, we would all cut the angles, and uh, thank God we had the lift because uh, somebody could go up high and hold the top of the panel, and then on the bottom, we just scoot it in and uh, screw it into place, and it worked out really great. I think we had the, all the metal done within two, three weeks. Then once it warmed back up, we started on the greenhouse again. Yep. Bobby and I did the arches. Yeah. I was on one side and he was on the other side and we were up on ladders putting them up. That's right. Yep. Yeah. 
In the spring, we started back on the greenhouse and we installed all the arches and the gutters and the rest of the structure of the greenhouse and got that finally done. Uh, from there, we had to get water back to the greenhouse. We have city water on the property. So the water line is actually up by the road, which is about 1,500 feet from the greenhouse. Then it was time to connect the greenhouse and the head house with this control tunnel. And we did this all ourselves, even the cement. Mom and Dad did that. And they put the nice non-slip finish on there. And Dad and Bobby did all of the framing for the control tunnel and put a nice wooden exterior on there. So when we were doing the uh, control tunnel here, Dad decided to put a window in, which I was very happy about. Because the extra light in here and I can see out what's going out front and see what the weather's coming because in the greenhouse you can't tell all the time. But the hardest part of this was the slope because the head house is higher than the greenhouse so we had to figure out the angles with the siding and the boards and everything so to make sure it all fit together correctly. It was time to do the plastic covering. So there's just a little bit of poly up on that back wall but they got all of this plastic, the roof and the sides and everything done in just one day. Here we're getting ready to put the plastic on and the best idea I could come up with was we could basically use the roll of plastic instead of trying to fight it, I would just make a hanger. We can pull it off that spool and just make it really easy so we didn't have to have somebody back here actually trying to unwind the plastic at the same time. So that worked out great. It's a double poly greenhouse, so there's actually two layers of plastic. So we had to pull the first layer down and then pull another layer on top of it. So um, that's what you see here is the, the double poly is actually being put up. We try to get it as tight as we can and then have to clip it into the different gutters and stuff to make it work. It's important that you pick a day that it's not windy or this would become a nightmare. So we were able to get all the plastic, both roofs and both sides done in three quarters of a day. And from there I went right into getting the insect exclusion done, um, and which included building the vent wall. The vent wall consisted of a uh, aluminum frame with a polycarbonate side and that we built in place and then getting the insect exclusion um, installed, which is basically the thrip uh, netting. We had to insulate the end wall, so we used um, a foam insulation, and I wanted to cover the outside of the foam with um, plywood so that we could finish the inside of the greenhouse. We wanted to make it look really nice because we spend so much time back here. So that's why I put the plywood up, and we actually painted it, and then I trimmed everything out. Then we started working on the control tunnel. Mom put the insulation in. We, again, we finished it the same way with plywood, painted it, and then put the green trim up. The rest of the summer was spent getting the different systems into the greenhouse. Here is the vent wall in the back and I'm installing the wet wall. I had to build the, the bottom catch basin and all the plumbing for that. 
I'm looking forward to showing you how this works once we get it going again, when it gets hot. Dad also installed the heating system, but there's a video on that already, so I will link that for you. And another big project was running the gas line from the oil slash gas well in the back and then getting everything set for the wood burner. And the reason why we have two sources of heat is because the well can be unreliable sometimes. It'll get clogged up and then there's no pressure. So we have to have that backup wood burning system for the greenhouse. Another big project was this electrical, and Dad really took his time and made it nice and neat. The electrical was definitely something that you had to think about. Um, all the different colors, all the different gauges, we had to, I had to bend all the conduit, and then we had to snake the lines through. Katie would pull the wire as I would feed it through the different lines. The electrical was definitely a project to, to worry about. So Dad found this really cool company and he uh, got this insulation and we wanted to get it in before it got cold and any of the rodents decided to come in here. I wanted to use a foam insulation on the head house just to kind of help seal up the holes and foam seems to tighten up the building a little bit. I actually had some bids to do it. It was very, very expensive so I found this great company um, that actually um, sold the A and B product and I was able to do it all myself. So. It worked out really great. Then we worked on getting the NFT support system in. We um, came in and put the slope cross beams in and connected them to the main beams. And then we put the intermediate ones in and then also the cross number things here. And you know, one thing we should have done with the intermediate ones is we should have cut them off because we're high above and when you go to pull the channels across when they're full of greens it ends up ripping the leaves so you got to be really careful about that. Everything for the support system is held together with these brackets and then two tech screws and you can still see the marks on these from the jackhammer this little indent right there there's four main uh, pipes. These are drain pipes that flow back to the reservoir tank and dad installed these. These all came pre-drilled so once these were in we were able to just put the channels right in there and they just kind of fit right in. The channels took a long time. We had to clean both ends and then glue them without the environmentals on. The fumes would be so intense inside the greenhouse that we would both get headaches really bad, so we had to stop and only do a section at a time. The last bit of the greenhouse was getting the plumbing installed, running all the lines, getting the tank set up, um, the nutrient feed lines and the return lines, and making sure everything was glued and valves put in, everything done. And it was January 2015 we were ready. Yep, that's when I uh, started seeding. That's right. And we had all the environmentals, so it was nice and warm in here. Very exciting. We weren't completely finished at that point. Mom and Dad ended up taking their time finishing up the head house and they really turned it into a nice workspace. It's great having this extra room and the big sinks and the table, got the cooler and all the work areas. So it's a lot easier to get stuff done and we all have a lot of fun back here. No, it was a lot of work but we really enjoyed doing it. We were able to have the family help help us build everything that we did, the head house, the greenhouse, and we've really enjoyed it. It's been a great time back here. I had fun doing the greenhouse with you, going out there almost every weekend. We were out there a lot. Yeah, we, uh, we were remodeling our house at the time and 
I think we spent more time doing that because it was more fun working on the greenhouse with uh, your mom and dad than doing our house. Yeah. And then we had a big push for our house, but the greenhouse was a lot of fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing that. Hey, uh, year and a half long project crammed into a short video. But if you have any questions about anything, leave those for me and I can pass stuff along to Doug and Katie too. So more greenhouse videos coming, um, a maple syrup video, and possibly another live stream soon. So we'll see you guys later and thanks for watching.